Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First. Conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page, where we give God the first of our day. We pray together, read His Word together, study His Word together, discuss His Word together, and uh, just have a good time being with each other very first thing in the morning in the name of Jesus. My name's Dennis. I'm one of a team of three that comes to you Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. And we are part of the Bible Project, reading through the Bible. We've gone through the New Testament, I believe, uh, Proverbs, one, and we're going through the Old Testament now. We'll be continuing that reading today in chapter 16 of 2 Chronicles. And I uh, hope you're excited about that. We get to read together. Uh, something you may not do is just sit down and read the Old Testament. Uh, a lot of people don't just sit down and say, well, I'm just going to read Chronicles today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of times that doesn't happen, but we can read a chunk a day, something digestible, something we can get into and enjoy and just have a good time. I know some of you are already doing this, but hashtag live if you're watching at 7 o'clock hour, hashtag recorded if you're watching at any other time, and hashtag shared if you're putting this out on your social media pages. Good morning, I see Michelle Edge. Uh, man, who else? My, I, my eyes are not as young as they used to be, Neil Hedges. And we've got Mel Drury, Vicki Smith. Golly, just a bunch of folks on here. I don't ever say names, but I've started doing that a little bit. I don't want to miss anybody. Don't leave anybody out. So, hello, everyone. Is that good? <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Thank you for being here. We're going to go ahead. We usually read for a few first-time visitor. All these hearts and likes are for you, by the way, if you're a first-time visitor. Everybody's all our regular folks saying hello and uh, just welcoming you here to the Pray First page. But uh, we normally read 15 minutes plus or minus, and uh, we're using the message version, by the way. I never never really got into it or really uh, checked it out much till this, and it's pretty cool to read it in here. It gives us a little clarity uh, in, in what we're reading. Hope you guys like my JV Youth shirt that was given to me by the JV Youth and the leaders, and they tie-dyed this thing. Well, man, looks cool. I've got another one more next week from another uh, part of our uh, youth camp. So, <clears throat> all right, guys, get your Bibles, get your pens, get your journals, whatever you use when we're studying. <clears throat> and we're going to continue in Second Chronicles, chapter sixteen. All right, so let me get let me get a timer going here. And we will get started. Second Chronicles chapter 16. But in the 36th year of Asa's reign, Basha, king of Israel, attacked. He started it by building a fort at Ramah, Ramah and closing the border between Israel and Judah to keep Asa, king of Judah, from leaving or entering. Asa took silver and gold from the treasuries of the temple of God and the royal palace, and sent it to Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, who lived in Damascus, with this message. Let's make a treaty like one, the one between our fathers. I'm showing my good faith with this gift of silver and gold. Oh, lost my place for a minute there. Break your deal with Basha, Basha, king of Israel, so he'll quit fighting against me. Then Hadad went along with King Asa and sent his troops against the towns of Israel. They sacked Ajan, Dan, Abel, Maim, Maim, and all the store cities of Naphtali. When Basha, Basha got the report, he quit fortifying Ramah. Then King Asa issued orders to his people in Judah to haul away the logs and stones Basha had used in the fortification of Ramah and used them himself to fortify Geba and Mizpah. Just after that, Hananiah the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said, Because you went for help to the king of Aram and didn't ask God for help, you've lost a victory over the army of the king of Aram. Didn't the Ethiopians and Libyans come against you with superior forces, completely outclassing you with their chariots and cavalry? But you asked God to help, and he gave you the victory. God is, God is always on the alert, constantly on the lookout for people who are totally committed to him. You were foolish to go for human help 
when you could have had God's help. Now you're in trouble. One round of war after another. After that, Asa lost his temper. Angry, he put Hananiah in the stocks. At the same time, Asa started abusing some of the people. A full account of Asa is written in the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah. In the 39th year of his reign, Asa came down with a severe case of foot infection. He didn't ask God for help, but went instead to the doctors. Then Asa died. He died in the 41st year of his reign. They buried him at mausoleum, in a mausoleum that he had built for himself in the city of David. They laid him in a crypt full of aromatic oils and spices. <clears throat> and then they had a huge bonfire in his memory. <clears throat> Asa's son, Jehoshaphat, was the next king. He started out on working on his defense system against Israel. He put troops in all the fortress cities of Judah and deployed garrisons throughout Judah and in the towns of Ephraim that his father Asa had captured. God, God was, was on Jehoshaphat. God was on Jehoshaphat's side because he struck the way he stuck to the ways of his father, Asa's early years. He didn't fool around with the popular Baal, Baal religion. He was a seeker and follower of the God of his father and was obedient to him. He wasn't like Israel, and God secured the kingdom under his rule, gave him a firm grip on it. And everyone in Judah showed their appreciation by bringing gifts. Jehoshaphat ended up very rich and much honored. He was single-minded in following God, and he got rid of the local sex and religion shrines. In the third year of his reign, he sent his officials, excellent men, every one of them, Ben Hiel, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Micaiah on a teaching mission to the cities of Judah. <clears throat> they were accompanied <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> by Levites, Shemaiah, Nathaniah, Zebediah, Asahel, Asahel, Shemaramoth, Jehonathan, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobajah, and Tobadonijah, the priest Elishama and Jerome were also in the company. They made a circuit of the towns of Judah teaching the people and using the book of the revelation of God as their text. There was a strong sense of the fear of God in all the kingdoms around Judah. They didn't dare, they didn't dare go, against, go to war against Jehoshaphat. Some Philistines even brought gifts and a load of silver to Jehoshaphat and the desert Bedouin brought flocks, 7,700 rams and 7,700 goats. So Jehoshaphat became stronger by the day and constructed more and more forts and store cities, an age of prosperity for Judah, an age of prosperity for Judah. He also had excellent fighting men stationed in Jerusalem. The captains of the military units of Judah Classified according to the families were Captain Ad Adna with 300,000 soldiers, his associate captain Jehoana, Jehonan with 280,000, his associate Amasia, son of Zikri, a volunteer for God with 200,000, Officer Eliada represented Benjamin with 200,000 fully equipped with bow and shield, and his associate was Jehoshabad, Jehoshabad with 180,000 armed and ready for battle. These were under the direct command of the king. In addition, there were the troops assigned to the fortress cities spread all over Judah. Chapter 18. But even though Jehoshaphat was very rich and very honored, he, he made a marriage alliance with Ahab of Israel. Sometime later, he paid a visit to Ahab at Samaria. Ahab celebrated his visit with a feast, a huge barbecue with all the lamb and beef you could eat. But Ahab had a hidden agenda. He wanted Jehoshaphat's support in attacking Ramoth Gilead. Then Ahab brought it into the open. Will you join me in attacking Ramoth Gilead? Jehoshaphat said, you bet. <clears throat> I'm with you all the way. You can count on me and my troops. Then Jehoshaphat said, But before you do anything, ask God for guidance. The king of Israel got the prophets together. 
all 400 of them, and put the question to them, should I attack Ramoth Gilead or should I hold back? Go for it, they said. God will hand it over to the king. But Jehoshaphat dragged his feet. Is there another prophet of God around here we can consult? Let's get a second opinion. The king of Israel told Jehoshaphat, as a matter of fact, there is another, but I hate him. He never preaches anything good to me. Only doom, doom, doom. Micaiah, son of Imlah. The king wouldn't talk about a prophet like that, said Jehoshaphat. Shouldn't talk about a prophet like that, said Jehoshaphat. So the king of Israel ordered one of his men, quickly, get Micaiah, son of Imlah. Meanwhile, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat were seated on their thrones, dressed in their royal robes, resplendent in front of the Samaria city gates. All the prophets were staging a prophecy performance for their benefit. Zedekiah, son of Kenanah, and even, had even made a set of iron horns and brandishing them, called out, God's word, with these horns you'll go around Aram until there's nothing left of them. All the prophets chimed in, yes, go for Ramoth Gilead, an easy victory, God's gift to the king. Then the messenger who went to get Micaiah told him, the prophets have all said yes to the king. Make it unanimous, vote yes. But Micaiah said, as sure as God lives, God says, I'll say. With Micaiah before him, the king asked him, so Micaiah, do we attack Ramoth Gilead or do we hold back? Go ahead, he said, an easy victory, God's gift to the king. Not so fast, said the king. How many times have I made you promise under oath to tell me the truth and nothing but the truth? All right, said Micaiah, since you insist. I saw all of Israel scattered over the hills, sheep with no shepherd. Then God spoke. These poor people have no one to tell them what to do. Let them go home and do the best they can for themselves. The king of Israel turned to Jehoshaphat. See, what did I tell you? He never has a good word from me from God, only doom. Micaiah kept on. I'm not done yet. Listen to God's word. I saw God enthroned and all the angel armies of heaven standing at attention, ranged on his right and his left. And God said, how can we seduce Ahab into attacking Ramoth Gilead? Some said this, some said that. Then a bold angel stepped out, stood before God and said, I'll seduce him. And how will you do it, said God. Easy, said the angel. I'll get all the prophets to lie. That should do it, said God. On your way, seduce him. And that's what happened. God filled the mouths of your puppet prophets with seductive lies. God has pronounced your doom. Just then, Zedekiah, son of Kenanah, came up and slapped Micaiah in the face, saying, Since when did the Spirit of God leave me and take up with you? Micaiah said, you'll know soon enough. You'll know it when you're frantically and futilely looking for a place to hide. The king of Israel had heard enough. Get Micaiah out of here. Turn him over to Ammon, the city, of, city magistrate, and to Joash, the king's son, with this message. King's orders, lock him up in jail. Keep him on bread and water until I come back in one piece, Micaiah said. Oh, one piece. Micaiah said, if you ever get back in one piece, I'm no prophet of God. He added, when it, when it happens, O oh people, remember where you heard it. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat's king of Judah went ahead and attacked, and attacked Ramoth Gilead. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, wear my kingly robe. I'm going into battle disguised. So the king of Israel entered the battle in disguise. Meanwhile, the king of Aram had ordered his chariot commanders there were 32 of them. Don't bother with anyone, whether small or great. Go after the king of Israel <clears throat> and him only. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, they said, There he is, the king of Israel, and took after him. Jehoshaphat yelled out, and the chariot commanders realized they had the wrong man. It wasn't the king of Israel after all. God intervened, and they let him go. Just then, someone <clears throat> without aiming shot an arrow into the crowd and hit the king of Israel in the chink of his armor. The king told the charioteer, turn back, get me out of here. 
I'm wounded. All, all day the fighting continued hot and heavy. Propped up in his chariot, the king watched from the sidelines. He died that evening. All right, we're going to stop at the end of chapter 18. The next reading will be 2 Chronicles 19. Thanks for being with me this morning, everyone. I'm going to pray for you before I let you go about your day. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for everyone that's come this morning. Thank you for your word, Lord, that we can uh, read your word, read the history of it, Lord, and, and draw the spiritual things we need, even, even practical things from your scripture sometimes, Lord. And sometimes we just read it so that we'll know your word, Father. Thank you so much. Lord, I've heard for all. Anyone who's sick, Lord, those that need healing, recovery, and uh, those who are in grief, Father, I pray your your uh, strengthening hand over them. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. I pray you keep everyone uh, safe from the heat. And ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Y'all have a good day, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.